In this video, we're going to talk about how Palo Alto handles antivirus and exactly what that means is wouldn't it be great if our firewall was able to inspect all of the traffic that happened in our environment prior to it reaching our end users, prior to it reaching our destination. Uh, so for instance, say we have an environment right here where we have a user over here. Um, let's call him, you know, happy little Joe. And Happy Little Joe is visiting some sort of a questionable website. Maybe he's even on Facebook.com or some other website like that that is out here on the internet that has been attacked by a hacker. That hacker has put a virus on that web page so that when our happy little user Joe goes through to the internet, uh, that hacker's website gets in and then the virus comes back all the way through down to Joe and infects his computer. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could right here on the Palo Alto go ahead and inspect that traffic, uh, look at that traffic, do some sort of an AV scan on it and then kill it right there make sure that the user or that the virus never even gets into our network before it gets onto a computer. And that's exactly what antivirus on the Palo Alto does. Uh, by running AV on that, it's able to kind of see the packets as they go from one point to another and inspect them and evaluate them appropriately. Now, because we are talking about having antivirus on the firewall does not mean you don't mean don't need antivirus on your desktops or your servers. You still want to have antivirus literally everywhere. Uh, anywhere you can put antivirus, you want to put antivirus. Uh, it costs a little bit of money to do that. It costs a little bit of processing power, but by having AV in all of these locations, you are more secure and more capable of protecting your environment. So how does antivirus on the Palo Alto work? Well, it looks works very similar to um, to the URL filtering. If you had seen my prior video when we talked about URL filtering, uh, it's pretty much the same in a lot of ways. First off, it's a licensed feature, just like most other antivirus solutions out there. It utilizes frequently updated lists. These are oftentimes known as signatures and the signatures help define what a virus looks like. In order for this to work, what you do is you create an antivirus profile and then you attach that to a security policy, exactly the same way as what you would do if you were doing URL filtering or a lot of the other profiles that are out there. So let's take a look at what that actually means. Here I am on my Palo Alto and first thing I want to do is confirm if my licensing is valid. So over here under device, I look on left hand side under licenses. And I scroll on down a little bit and right here I can see threat prevention. That is the license I'm looking for. Uh, I'm currently between issued and expired. Therefore, I am golden. I am licensed to run antivirus. Awesome. Next thing I need to do, do is I need to download the latest updates. In order to download the latest updates, I, again, under device, I come over here to dynamic updates and I click check now. Check now goes out to the internet and it says, show me the latest updates for all of the software on my computer and download the list of all of those updates. Uh, right here I have my section for antivirus. If you do the check now and it doesn't show, uh, turns out there's a slight bug with this. Uh, what you have to do is under applications and threats, go ahead and find the latest version of applications and threats. Uh, let's see, if need, if necessary, click download and then the download will change to an install button. So go ahead and download and then install the latest version of applications and threats. When you're done, click check now again and the antivirus will show up. 
So the the antivirus is there. We can go ahead and we can look and see. See 3654, 3655, 3658. That is the latest one. 3147, 3658. I'm gonna go ahead and click download. Our Palo Alto now downloads that update off the internet or the antivirus signatures off the internet. Close. Once it's downloaded, it the little checkbox shows up right here saying, yes, it's been downloaded. My action then changes to install. So I'll go ahead and click install. And that actually installs the uh, antivirus signatures into my Palo Alto. And once the antivirus is complete, we can, if we wish, we can go ahead and read the release notes over here on the right hand side. Uh, feel free to do that. It will tell you about all the signatures that are in there. There will be several hundred thousand different signatures uh, that are available for the environment. Let's see, new, new antivirus signatures in just this one update. There are 20,000 new updates. Uh, if we keep scrolling down, does it say how many total updates there are? it new spyware uh yeah i'll let that go ahead and run on its own feel free to read over it it can be a little interesting okay so the next thing that we need to do now that we've gone ahead and downloaded the signature updates is we need to create our profile and our apply that profile to our security policy profiles are under objects and then on the left hand side uh, under security profiles, we will see we have antivirus. So go ahead and click on antivirus and there is a default policy. Uh, rule of thumb is always start with a default policy and copy from it. So I've gone ahead and highlighted that and down here at the bottom, I'm gonna click clone. Let's say okay. And then we'll go ahead and open that and we'll start off by renaming it let's call this uh, default internet policy and it has lots of different decoders available to us http smtp imap smb a lot of viruses are sent both via over http and email so it's a good thing to be able to have those in there as well as ftp and smb while we're talking about our viruses here, we also have this option right here, which is packet capture. So if we check that box, what happens is if a virus is found, it will actually capture the packets that were going through the wire uh, while the virus was identified. You can then inspect it at a later point. If you're really interested in it, you can start throwing in some application exceptions. Maybe there's a specific application that you want to be able to access viruses. <laughs> a specific application that is designed to work with viruses, to download viruses. Maybe you're a security researcher. Maybe you have some application that finds things or works with things that look like viruses but aren't. So you can add in an exception for specific applications. Additionally, you can load up specific virus exceptions right here. Uh, so maybe there's a specific virus type that keeps getting triggered in your environment, but you have gone ahead and you've looked at the packet capture and you've confirmed that it's not a virus. So you can come in here and you can add in specific threats, that specific virus to be able to give an exception for that one specific virus type. Well, let's go ahead and say, okay, this will, uh, we can see here for HTTP, uh, the default action is to reset both the client and server connections if a virus is found. You could allow alert, drop, reset the client, reset the server, or reset both. 
Uh, so I'll go ahead with reset both and say okay. So now that we have our virus policy, uh, uh, sorry, virus profile, we then go to policies and we modify our security policy to allow that to happen. Uh, so I want to do that on this permit private to internet. And same as before with the, uh, with the URL filtering, I come over here to actions under profile settings. I say, I want a profile and specifically I want an antivirus part profile, which is my default internet policy. Say okay and commit. At this time, uh, as soon as this commit finishes, uh, antivirus will be running on our network and therefore anytime we try to download a virus on our company network, we will be blocking it. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to confirm this in a somewhat safe way uh, so we can confirm that our viruses are being blocked properly, uh, but in a safe way so that we don't end up breaking things. So I have my machine right here, my client PC, and I'm going to go ahead and start browsing the internet. And there's one specific web page that I want to go to, which is icar.org e-i-c-a-r dot org and what icar is is it is a sample virus string it is a uh, there we go malware test file uh, what it does is it allows us to simply test to see if a virus will uh, a virus is being caught by our antivirus uh, you can actually see down here Right there is the actual content of the file itself. Uh, so we can see, yes, this is what it would be. It's a completely transparent and non-dangerous file to our environment. What I wanna do, however, is I want to try to download that file. So if we scroll back up to the top, uh, so we, we clicked up here on the right, download anti-malware test file. And then on the left-hand side, we click download. And that will take us to the download page and we can see we have eight different options for downloading. Uh, the first half are via HTTP, the second are SSL over HTTPS. Uh, we can see we have icar.com, icarcom.txt because sometimes you want to rename your executable.txt in order to bypass any virus scanners. Sometimes you will zip it and sometimes you will zip it inside of a zip in order to hide from your AV scanners. So if I go ahead and try to download one of these files, I should get spyware virus blocked. That's awesome. Same thing with the text file. It inspects it, it sees that it tries to be an executable hidden as a text file. That's awesome. I can then do it with a zip file. It unzips the file and looks inside to see if there's a virus. Same thing with the zipped zip file. Now in this scenario, the only thing that goes through is the SSL because we don't yet have any SSL decryption configured. And so if I click that, it does in fact try to save the file. Uh, ooh, Windows Defender blocked it. That's probably kind of good. Let's see if I can actually open one of these guys in Notepad. Nope. Windows Defender doesn't like it either. Uh, so that's why you have antivirus everywhere. But so there you go. That simple, in order to set up antivirus in your environment, it will protect against a majority of the viruses that are trying to come in through your network.